All right, welcome back to what is now possibly one of the longest tutorials you've ever watched. Um, when I started this, I had no idea it would uh, take this long, and it probably wouldn't have if it were planned properly. But I was just trying out a new format where I just kind of jump in and start making something. Uh, I think it's a sort of more real um insight into how i do most of my projects for anyone who might be interested anyway um we can carry on with this this is exactly where we left off in the well i said left off more like where we cut off in the last video i'm gonna just finish up the modeling and then we'll move on to the texturing and lighting so this light here needs to be sort of a uh, mirrored across to the other side so what i'm gonna do is to create a new null object get to all of this geometry up here and drop it into the null object and then i will get a symmetry object and let's drop the null into here and you see it gets mirrored across okay that's looking uh, pretty good note that on this side here we don't have the rails so before we go ahead and do some texturing and lighting, it might be fun to just see what this looks like when we replicate it and um, actually make it into a tunnel. So I'm going to just shut off my reference image. I'm going to collect all of these uh, uh, objects and remove anything I don't need. Let's create a new null object. And let's move it 200 into the Z space. Oops, that is the wrong null object. This is what I want here. And this is gonna go right on the edge of all of our geometry here. Let's put everything into this one null object. And let's get a cloner. So if you remember that trick that I showed you in the previous video, if you go to MoGraph whilst holding AOT and select your null over here and get the cloner, the cloner will automatically become the parent of that null. I'm gonna leave the count at 3 but change the Z steps to 400. Um, maybe we need more? Nope, that's right, 400. And uh, if you remember where to uh, line up these rails here, and I think uh, this is pretty good. I was worried there might be some irregular spacing, and I think there's a little bit here, but uh, this is just nitpicking. I think this is uh, good enough for what we need. So, from here, I can just make lots and lots and lots of copies. So I'm gonna put in 50 copies and we get this long long tunnel and if we look through it this is what we have we now have um, a basic um, block of our tunnel now we just need to go in and texture it and uh, light it for the texturing I'm gonna be using my own texture pack you will find this on our products page on motionsquared.net so starting with the ground textures, I'm going to start off with a, let me get this tarmac right here. Let's uh, go to the right piece of geometry. I think this is it. Let's uh, switch off everything and let's uh, select this plane and drop the tarmac onto here. You can see that it doesn't look right. Let's say I change the projection mode to cubic and uh, we need to rotate it. It's uh, facing the wrong way. And to rotate a texture, you first of all need to click the texture and you wanna click the object and then go to this uh, texture mode icon. And you will get this uh, box, go to rotate and then you can rotate it whichever way you want. This will only work if you are um, uh, thinking cubic or maybe flat projection. I'm not sure. Yeah, but um, I'm gonna stay in cubic 
this will not work in their, their default UV mapping projection. But anyway, uh, with this we are going to just increase the size. So the length U, let's make it uh, 200, and the length V, 200 also. And uh, we want this white line to be right on the edge here, and we only want half of it. So we're going to keep increasing this until this is close to this edge. So if I have maybe 400 and 400, I can use the offset to try and get that white line in the middle. And I don't want any of this grass over here. So 400 is not enough. Let's uh, try 450. And uh, I think we might be getting close, pretty close. Let's try 465 and 465. I think this should be it. We only want half of the line here because the other half will be mirrored across, of course. And we can uh, push this back to about here or so. So if I re-enable my symmetry and all the other objects, including the cloner, you can see now I have a continuous uh, road going back and I need to switch off this preview plane and you can see exactly what we have here. Looks uh, pretty cool. Okay, moving on, we're gonna texture the rest of this wall. We're just gonna work our way up here. So starting with this piece of concrete right here, I'm gonna go into the concrete section of our texture pack and maybe just grab one of these Concrete 31 looks pretty good. Um, concrete 12 is also quite nice. This is on the same object. Uh, we need to go to polygon mode and select these polygons here and these polygons up here, including this little section the sort of overhang and uh, this section here where it's beveled and we are going to drop one of these concrete textures on here and I need to switch off symmetry so that when I apply this it will go directly to where I want it to go to. I'm going to change the projection mode to cubic and uh, that's, that's a pretty good job. Maybe we can just uh, uh, change the alignment a little bit, the offset. Uh, it seems to be offsetting in two different directions. Let's uh, try and fix that. I don't think I'll be able to, but I'm gonna try anyway. If I optimize my geometry to begin with, and uh, also this form tag, let's limit it to about maybe 30 or so. It just it doesn't distort those edges as much. And uh, that looks a little bit better. Let's uh, just move it until we have something we like. I think about here looks pretty good to me. Um, the texture is continuing on, which is uh, pretty nice. That's the cool thing about these textures, they are all tileable. So you're always going to get a result that looks cool. I think I'm going to rotate this though. So if I grab it, get my object, go to the texture mode, I can hit rotation and uh, let's rotate it that way. Uh, we need it to be 90 degrees exactly. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, carrying on, let's see what we can do next. I am going to have this uh, blue section here uh, put in and then we'll do the white wall at the same time. So if we identify the blue areas, let's uh, solo this so that it is on its own. The blue area was uh, this section right here and uh, let's unselect the inside. Let's only select uh, 
the outside. And this section here was also blue, I believe. We can always check. Yes, it was. And uh, for this, I will get one of the concrete textures. This is uh, turquoise one here that we can uh, play around with to get some blue. If I go to the color channel, I can add a filter, get the U and just uh, slide this until we get a more bluish uh, looking color. Something like this, maybe lower the brightness. Uh, probably not a good idea. Set the color to black here and just uh, lower the mix strength to about 35 or so. And uh, we can drop this onto here. Let's unsolo. And let's set the projection to cubic. And uh, that looks pretty cool to me. And then this area here on the on the inside, we're going to duplicate the texture and just make it darker. So the mix strength will just drop it to about 15 or so. Let's uh, solo this again and get this section here and drop the same texture and also set it to be cubic. Uh, I think I dropped the wrong texture onto there. This is the one that I wanted. There we go. So that is just a little bit darker. Okay, um, we can do this wall now. So that section here, this little bit here. Let's uh, undo the sections there. And uh, we need a brick texture. So if we go to our texture pack and go to the walls section, then we can find something here that will work. Uh, we have uh, some kind of a white wall here, but I don't think that's going to cut it. Even that. Um, hmm. I think this is the best one here. Let's, uh, let's get it and drop it on. And again, I just need to disable the symmetry. Oops, dropping it onto the wrong things, but uh, here we go. We need to rotate it. Um, and of course it needs to be cubic, first of all. And I think that actually corrected it by itself. Yeah, we just need to scale it properly now. If we just stretch it out in one of the axes, the length U, stretch this out to be, I don't know, roughly twice, so 200%. That uh, seems pretty good to me. All right, uh, next thing is this is a metal uh, sort of fence looking thing here. Let's uh, give it some nice texture. If we go back in the dirty metal section, we can get metal 22, that looks pretty good. Maybe 21 also. And uh, we're gonna drop it onto our poles. And the projection mapping there is pretty, pretty good. I'm not going to change that around. And the same for up here. Let's uh, do the piping. Uh, this does need changing around. If we set it to be cubic, that uh, seems to do the job. So we are all good. Uh, finally, just uh, the roof. Uh, I'm gonna create another generic texture for this. Uh, in fact, you know what? We can have uh, one of our own. If we go to concrete, let's see if we can find something that can go right there. Maybe in the walls section, we can have something that 
this wall is zero to three. Let's uh, solve this. Let's go to the top. Make a selection and drop this onto it. Mm, no, I don't think that's gonna work. Um, did I get the wrong texture there or not? I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, I did. Okay, that's a little better. We can set it to cubic. It's a pretty good job. And uh, we're just gonna mess around with the values here. Make it white and uh, just maybe 5% mix strength. If we go to the normal, we can uh, maybe lower this to be about 15 or so, maybe 25. Uh, we can do the same for the walls over here. If we close this down and open the walls. And maybe lower this to be about 35. So it's pretty subtle. The tarmac. Maybe we can do the same, maybe about 65 this time. And then unsolve that. So we now have this uh, complete section, textured and everything. And uh, I think we're ready for the final section, which is just the lights. And I think here yeah, the best way to light this is to just um, put a light into this uh, rig here and also replicate the light over and over again. So for the lights, I am going to get a, um, an area light. We need to bring it up here. Just rotate it to be minus 90 degrees and rotate it down. We basically need to give it the same shape as our um, dummy fluorescent light. And uh, if we go to details, we can change the fall off. Let's give it a size X of 400 and size Y of 45. So it sits right in front of our light perfectly. Like that. Next thing, we're going to give it a fall off. Let's have inverse square physically accurate and give it a radius of maybe 600. That's yeah, some pretty harsh lighting, but I think it should look cool. We are going to duplicate the same light and basically throw it to the other side. So if I just put positive X and then change the pitch, we now have light on both sides. I'm going to also drag this into the null object so that they will also get cloned. And if I turn on the clone, you can see what we have now. I'm going to position my camera, say right here, maybe insert a new camera and give it a wide angle. Something like this looks pretty neat. Uh, maybe look from a lower angle. I, I like those dramatic lower angles. I think they're just uh, more interesting. And then if we hit render, we can uh, see what we've made. And I think that looks Okay, so just before I go, here is an example of what I was able to render out from Cinema 4D after I had uh, done some better texturing, spent more time with that lighting and just tweaked uh, a lot of settings. Don't worry if you can't get your scene to look like this, I plan to make more in-depth tutorials on um, those topics. So stay tuned and of course you can download all of the project files over at videofort.com. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.